Hi there, welcome back. This is Remy Sharp and I am doing my advent of code. And these videos are the JavaScript solutions that I'm doing. Um, now I've been through days one through four and uh, we're currently on uh, in real time day seven. I did five and six over the weekend. Um, now I'm not gonna go through the full solution I did for five and six, uh, but what I wanted to show you is just the part one of five and part one of six because they have some nice small um kind of nuances that make it make javascript and, and any kind of programming language quite well suited to the problem solving so um this is the day five um and there is basically uh this rule or this code that dictates where you are sat on the plane um now when it goes through the description, it talks about, uh, so you have this this code, you start off between, you start off the, bleh, excuse me, the rows that you consider are naught to 127. So immediately in my head, something's flagging up that this is a, um, uh, what is it, seven bits of a byte. So um, seven bits of a byte, if you do you know, zero and then seven ones, you get 127. Um, and if we have an F, then we keep going between the uh, naught and 63, and we kind of split down further and further. This, to me, I suspect, looks like a bit shift. Um, <clears throat> and I'll show you how to actually do this. Um, and then the same thing goes for the last three characters of the code, um, and these are the values 0 to 7. Again, this looks like three bits of a byte. Um, and same kind of rules, it kind of splits it in half as you go along. Now, <clears throat> when you do a bit shift, um, so what I'm looking at is the value 127. If we shift once, then we get 0 to 63. If we shift twice, we get 31. You know, we're staying inside this 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 range here, three, um, and the same thing with the seven. If we shift once, we get 0 to three. Um, so in this case, R, if we had left, it would be naught to three. Um, and if it's right, it's three plus one up to seven. Uh, and then if it's two, we're adding on one and we're, <clears throat> we're using the bit, the, the shifting to work out kind of where we are in the row. And then there's just a simple, simple formula. Uh, the row number multiplied by eight plus the column uh, gives us the seat ID. And we've got some test codes here. So. I've um I've already solved this. I know the answers to the problem, and it's, I just wanted to show you, uh, walk through it to show you what it looks like. Uh, so I'm going to start off by reading the file in. Uh, we've got our five input, and I've already started Quokka. That's our input. Actually, um, in reality, actually, I want to just keep use these examples. So I don't even need the file. So I'm just going to pop this into my code as a comment for the time being. Um, I'm going to create a function called uh, decode. And we're going to get code in, and we're going to split, uh, spit out a value. So it's going to return um, uh, a string, and then it returns uh, returns uh, number. Yeah, so seat ID. I think I can't remember what the uh, the actual problem we're trying to solve is. Was it the uh, highest highest seat ID on the boarding pass? Um, but really, the, the work is decoding this, okay? So we're going to start off by um, setting a row number to zero, uh, a um, column number zero, and we're going to return uh, row times eight plus column, okay? So let's start with this one, decode. And the value that we're expecting out is uh, five, six, seven, and we're, we want row um, seven and column seven. So we want to look at these two values, right? Uh, row and column. So <clears throat> we have to loop through every character in the code. So let's just do a for loop, uh, code.length, and then we're just gonna call this C. Okay, so we've got each character here. Um, and whilst i is less than seven, so this is the um, front or back. So the first, where is it? Where it says the first seven characters. 
first ca seven characters of the nine character code <coughs> is going to be uh, front or back, and uh, this will be uh, left or right. So this will be LR, this will be uh, front or back. So what we need to do is increment the row number if we are going backwards. Okay, so if, if we go, if we're in the row that is front, 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 and then left, 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 we're expecting the um, the CID to be zero, right? So it should keep on kind of dividing to the left, 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 left the whole time of the, uh, the bit shift. I'm not sure if that makes sense. Um, so 127, shift one, um, so we don't want 63. When, if we're going forward, we don't want the 63, we don't want the 31 and so on. So we're interested only if we're going backwards. So if we're going backwards, if C equals uh, B, and experimentation is also what got me here, then I want to increment the row. Okay, so I want to increment the row by some value. And it's going to be some value, it's going to be some value of 127, oops, shifted by probably something like i. So if we have a look at that now, just to get an idea of what values we've got. Okay, so this looks um, wrong to start off with, and let's, let's actually just break this off to separate values. We're just looking at the shift. Okay, so we don't actually want our first value to be 127. Um, <clears throat> and in fact, let's yeah, so the first value isn't 127 if we're going backwards. The first value should be uh, 63 if we're going backwards, right? So um, the i value actually needs to start at 1, so we need to increment that just by 1. Okay, this is looking slightly better. And in fact, we're actually pretty close. We've got 150, 136, uh, which we're not even considering the other half yet. Let's have a quick look. Let's see if we can get this... I mean, uh, let's change this. And if we go left, 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 that means that all of these left should give us zero, and that value should be whatever, two, two, five, three. So if we change this to front, I'm expecting this to be zero. Okay. That is the value that I expect if the uh, C is right at the very front, because we're never, well, yeah, in fact, we're, None of this code's ever being executed, right? It's always always front. Um, let's add in the rule for going left or right and <clears throat> see where we get up to. So right is where the value goes up, increments. Left is when the value does not increment. So we're going to do if C equals uh, right, then we're going to do pretty much the same thing, but we're not going to be shifting by such a large value here, put this back in. Uh, so this is this is wrong now, right? We're not going to be shifting by one of this seven, eight, nine. We actually need to shift by whatever this value is minus seven. Uh, so that looks better. Sixty-three. No, is that right? No, that's not right at all, is it? We've got sixty-three. So what actually is this number? Uh, J. Just to break it up, j equals that. Not sure if any of this is making sense or if I'm just writing code. Um, uh, that's the wrong way around. Yeah, seven minus uh, plus one. Mm. Nope. I minus seven, not one, two. It's kind of I minus six, isn't it? Which is really, i plus 1 minus 7. So it looks like that i plus 1 actually could be over here. <clears throat> um, so maybe we need to do... Nah, I'll, le I'll leave the i plus 1 there for the time being. But that's the... I've got too many brackets right now. I've got a bit bracket heavy. Um, I don't think I need any of those brackets, in fact. Um, yeah, so that's the number we want. Oh, is it? 
Oh, it's not 127, it's 7th shift. There you go. Uh, 167, 167. It's kind of close, but it's not quite right, is it? So we go right, right, right. So if we go right three times, uh, what do they do? They went right, left, right. Let's stick that in the end and just see what happens. So starting, we're starting over there. We're considering columns naught through seven, which is what we. Uh, this is the north, north through seven. <clears throat> Going right, we consider so we're to add four, right? So oh, we've got to add four. So this is going to be four. Oh, and we call it row. There we go. That's probably right. Why? Um, <clears throat> so this becomes. Uh, what is it? So it starts at four here, and then left means it's considering four and five, and then right means keep column five. And if we check, yeah, column five is column is five. Let's stick this value into there. See if it matches. Whoops. Uh, so our if we look our row. Our, our, our row is 41, not 44. So let's have a look at why that's wrong. Oh, in fact, here, we're spitting out these numbers 31, 7, 3. You can see this is 32. So we're actually off by one. It looks like we're putting that same one plus logic. Uh, so one plus. Down there. And yeah, OK. Three, five, seven. So the, it's just basically come together. Um, I feel like there's a lot of kind of one pluses all over the place. Um, and I feel like I could probably refactor it to be a bit simpler. Uh, but this does look like it's giving us the value. So now let's try out with our three test rows. So let's pop this down at the end. Five six seven one one nine eight two zero. So that looks like it's working, and that's happening because of these bit shifts. Um, and bit shifting is so. I've got this this tool I wrote for myself. It's it's on a bit uh, bit. What's a bit app? Bit calc. Bit calc dot app. So uh, bit calc dot app. Um, it's a PWA, so I've installed it locally. Let's me do things like test out bit shifting just to see kind of what the numbers would look like um, and what they actually come out as. And I can change the uh, the byte size and so on. I find it quite useful to kind of experiment with these kind of things. Um, uh, so yeah, that's that's the code for uh, 5a. And that gives us our answer. Um, I can, I mean, is it worth testing with the full input? No, let's leave it like that. Okay. so. That was bit shifting. Uh, big fan of bit shifting because it makes me look clever, <laughs> makes me feel clever. Um, and uh, I just want to show you six. Feeling doesn't like that slash at the end. Um, so six is uh, what have we got. We got this. You're on the flight. You have a questionnaire, um, and uh, the, I found it a little bit tricky to grok first time around, but. Um, it's mostly because of the way I, I kind of read these questions. Um, I tend to look at the example, very much kind of a example driven understanding of, of English language, really. Uh, so with the, the the values we have here, each row, I believe, is a person. Each uh, like paragraph group, I guess, is a group. And each letter is where the uh, question A, B, or C had been answered yes. So this is a group of one person who answered yes to A, and B, and C. A group of three people uh, who answered A. One, someone else answered B. Someone else answered C. Uh, two people, four people, one person. So the question is, what is the sum of these counts uh, of yeses? So um, 
the the thing that you're expected to get caught out on is this one the where you have two people where three aren't three yeses have been counted okay so what we're looking for is within a group that we need to count the number of unique answers within a group and then we need to sum that complete that uh, every every number so let's take the uh, input here and let's do uh, const input equals that and then we're going to do uh, and again i have already solved this so i know my way through, around the code but the thing that this this particularly kind of suits is a set. Um, so MDN set. Ah, oh, terrific. Set E set. Where is it? Uh, here we go. So a set, uh, the way I think of a set is like, it's kind of like an array, um, but you access it in uh, more kind of explicit ways and you know, push, you add and delete. But all of the elements inside of a set are unique, which means that we can um, just pop all of these letters in. And where we've got duplicate letters, the set will just ignore that duplicate, give us the unique ones. So um, we're going to start off by doing uh, input.split on a double new line. Okay, so that breaks into a group. And then we're going to um, think. There's no trailing white space yet, that's fine. So that's the uh, groups, right? So we're gonna do uh, groups dot reduce accur. So this is the answers for each one. If we occur, oh, we have a side hopper. And the result is gonna be here, okay? So this is gonna be our final result. Um, Oops. Right, so we've got ABC, BCA, and there we've actually got a new line. So we need to do um, cur equals cur dot replace. Um, oops, new line with nothing. Okay. So that is kind of messy, but I think we get it. Um, in fact, actually, we just get rid of spaces i think yes yes we can get rid of spaces because it doesn't matter if we we're just looking for a unique number of answers right if that looks like that then that's fine okay so um i'll make sure we do a g to get rid of all of the spaces <clears throat> and then we're going to um split that into an array and then we're going to do um new set from this array and we're going to get the size. And then we're just going to do ack plus equals that. And we can just return that. Okay. So we've got an answer 11, uh, which is this, which is good. Um, so what is going on here? We've got, uh, well, there's th uh, three or four parts. Um, and that, you know this can be completely whacked down to that, which is oh, which is a uh, is nice, a bit bit overly short, but let's break it into multiple lines. Right. So what we're looking at is uh, a few pieces, and if we kind of nest our way down to work out exactly what is happening, yeah. So. We are replacing all of the white space, we're basically deleting all the white space. So here, delete all white space in a group. So, you know, this group just becomes a sequence of four, four A's in a row. Then we split it into an array of uh, letters. So this becomes a, a, an array of four letters or four characters uh, as A, 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 A. And then we create a new set. And the set does the work of saying, okay, iterate over this array and create a new value for each one of these. And because we do add A, add A, add A, the set says, well, I have that already, so we're only going to have one A in there. And then we do dot size, which gives us a value of one in this case, because there's only one A. And then we're adding that to the uh, accumulator, which uh, is also returned. So this is, you know, this is how you do a sum of uh, these values. 
and there is our answer. So if we drop in, you know, the real uh, puzzle code, we get, you know, the answer, whatever, six something. So uh, that's pretty nice. I, I'm pretty sure that part B doesn't let me do that, but um, it was nice to be able to answer the first question with uh, such a small amount of code, um, in particular to use a set, which is, I don't often have a use for sets, but they're quite useful when you do get to use them. So that was uh, part A of day five and part B, uh, part A of day six. And we looked at bit shifting. Um, I showed you the bitcalc.app, which uh, yeah, I, I use a lot because of the kind of work I do. Um, and also uh, using sets to kind of automatically get unique lists. So thanks for watching. Um, I am going to do day seven at some point today. I might just start getting into the rhythm of kind of showing you the tricks that I'm using or the little useful bits rather than walking through the whole example. Um, but I probably will still post the full examples when I write it in uh, JQ. Um, and thus far, I've only managed to solve part one of day one in Z80 assembly because that is escaping me. Thanks for watching.